Hi, and welcome to another Woodwing Quick Tips. Today, we're going to be talking about using assets inside of the Woodwing Digital Asset Management System. What do I mean by using assets? When we're talking about using assets, what we mean is you've done all this great work organizing and then searching for the assets that you want to do something with, but now you actually need to do something with them. And Woodwing gives you a few options in that arena. So you can see that I've completed a search here, and I've got my subset of assets that I may want to work with in front of me. So the first thing I may want to do is actually just take a look at these assets inside the system. We call that preview. And all you have to do is select the asset that you want to preview and hit the space bar. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring that asset front and center so that you can have a good look at it. You can zoom in on it as far as the resolution of the specific asset will allow. And you can look at the metadata associated with that asset. There may be times that you want to look at more than one asset side by side, say if you're doing a select process where you're going to be looking at a number of assets that were collected for you and you need to then either rate them or reject them. And in that case, it's as simple as making multiple selections in the search window and then hitting the space bar. All the assets that have been selected will be presented to you side by side and you still have the same amount of control over uh, zoom and positioning. And you also have the ability to now take this light board and break it out into its own window. And that window can be positioned on a separate monitor if you would like, so that you can have your search results and your preview window side by side. In this case, I'm just using tabs. And I have three images up here. I can go through and you'll see that I can, with a right click, choose to rate or reject these images. But I can also add and remove images from this preview by going back to the search results and then simply selecting additional assets. You'll see that I went from three now to five side by side. And I can remove assets by deselecting them in the search window. So I'll remove that tiger. And if we look at the light board again, you'll see that I now just have four assets. So that's the first way that you can work with assets in Woodwing. What's another thing that you may want to do? you may want to download an image to actually use it for something outside of the system. We have an option called Download in the system. And underneath the Download menu, there are a few options. So the first thing that I may want to do is download a preview of the image. And what that's going to do is generate a low-resolution version of the image for me. By choosing that, it brings up a Finder window, which is going to allow me to name or accept the given name of the asset and choose a download location. And if I select that, a low-resolution version of the image has been downloaded. Other options I have are to download the original, which is going to download the image exactly as it's stored in your system at the original resolution and dimensions. Or I have saved presets, and these presets were created by the administrator of the system, and they allow me to do a few transcodes on the fly. In this instance, I have Quick PNG selected, and Quick PNG is going to do exactly what it says. You can see that it's going to convert this to 300 PPI, and it's going to convert it to a PNG without making any other alterations to the image. The administrator can create and assign as many custom downloads as they like, and they'll be available to those users who have rights to those specific download presets. You also have the ability to create a transcode of your own on the fly by choosing Download Custom. If I choose that, you'll see that I'm given some options about how to manipulate this image. The first thing that I can do is convert the format. If it's in JPEG, I can change it to a PNG or a TIFF. I can choose how I want to manipulate the size. In this case, I may want to choose maximum size and then present a bounding box, say 300 pixels by 300 pixels. And the image will maintain its aspect ratio and just be presented inside of that bounding box. And then I can change the resolution. So for example, if I'm going to web, I may choose 72. And then I have the embed color profile option. The thing about downloading an image, though, is that it's doing exactly that. It's pulling it out of the system and creating a copy wherever you specified for it to save. Once that copy is made, the Woodwing Dam no longer has any way of knowing what may or may not happen to that asset. And that's great if you want to actually pull the asset out of your workflow and, say, include it in an email or throw it up on social media. But there are instances where you actually don't want to lose track of the asset that you're pulling out of Woodwing. And for that, we have a little bit of workflow. There's uh, the ability to check out and then check in images. And this works differently from downloading in that you're no longer in control of where exactly that file is landing on the operating system. Woodwing is going to take care of that. And Woodwing is going to take care of the integration with whatever app is used for manipulating that asset. So for example, this image here, if I want to check this out instead of download it, I can right click and choose check out or I can choose check out from the menu bar here. 
and that image is instantly opened up inside of the application that edits it. In this case, it's a JPEG, and so this has been opened up in Photoshop for me. And you'll notice that there is now a pencil on top of this asset, and that's letting everybody else in the system know that the asset's been checked out and that you're not going to be able to check it out to make any alterations to it. It also tells you the name of the user that has the asset in case you need to find out who's working on it. Going back to Photoshop, I can do whatever work I need to do with this asset, whatever kind of image manipulation that means, uh, whether that's color correction or simple cropping, which is what I'm gonna do in this case. And then, again, not having to worry about where the file is stored on the operating system. All I have to do is close out, save the image, and you'll see there's now a small star next to that pencil on the asset. That's indicating that changes have been made to it. And I have the option, as the user who has this checked out, to either check this in or to abort it. And I'm going to go ahead and check it in. And you'll notice that the changes that were made in Photoshop are now reflected in the thumbnail of the image. And under the History tab, a version of that image has been created so that no data has been lost. This is non-destructive editing. So I now have the original version. I have the version that was just checked in, and I have a transaction log showing me exactly who made what changes and when, so that I always have the option to revert back to an older version if I'd like to do so. One of the most powerful things about the Woodwing Digital Asset Management solution is that this works for every single asset type in the system, not just for images. If there's an application on your machine that can work with an asset that you have stored in Woodwing, Woodwing can integrate with that application. For example, here's a Word document, and I can do the exact same checkout procedure with this. By choosing Check It Out, it's opening that document inside of Microsoft Word, allowing me to make changes without having to indicate exactly where that file is stored, and then communicating back to Woodwing the fact that changes were made, and then when I check it back in, the changes themselves. Also, of course, maintaining a version of every change that's been made. It's worth noting that this works for every type of asset in the system, but for InDesign, we have a special integration, and you would use the Open in InDesign option from the drop-down menu instead. That functionality is covered in a separate video called Working with InDesign Files in Woodwing Dam, and I suggest that you have a look at that if you're interested in that functionality. In addition to the out-of-the-box functionality that Woodbring provides, any plug-in functionality that you have can also be applied to images in the system. So if you have a plug-in that allows you to do geo-coordination, create usage reports, create a context sheet, auto-tag images using artificial intelligence, or anything else, that can also be run on individual or groups of images inside of the system. Well, that is a Woodwing quick tip on how to use images inside of the system once you've done all this great work organizing and finding the images that you want to work with. Please check out our other quick tip videos where we cover all of the functionality inside of the Woodwing Digital Asset Management Solution. And if you're looking for further information, please visit our website at woodwing.com.